the anesthesiologists of Uganda uh, was born out of the Uganda Society of Anesthesiologists. Uh, the Uganda Society of Anesthesiologists was initially the body that brought together the anesthetic officers and uh, the anesthesiologists at the time. Uh, a group of anesthesiologists came together and they felt that uh, a lot of the objectives of the Uganda Society of Anesthesiologists were actually directed at the anesthetic officers other than the anesthesiologists. We thought, given uh, those circumstances, the growth potential was not going to happen. Uh, the group uh, then got together and decided to create this association with a view to drive forward at uh, an accelerated rate and lead this uh, discipline of anesthesia in the country together with critical care uh, at a much faster pace, which we think we are on target. Uh, we are working with Gradient Health Systems. Um, Gradient Health Systems is one of the companies that actually supplied some of the equipment, like the um, uh, critical comprehensive care ventilator, the CCV. Um, and um, after they supply the ventilators, they, 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 they realize that the ventilators are not being used, the equipment are not working as they are meant to do to be and so they uh, we, we 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 talked to them uh, we lobbied for some funds to try and send anesthesiologists to um, make sure that the equipment that we put in these facilities are functional so uh, gradian has been support supportive and i would like to thank them uh, for firstly listening to local solutions uh, and accepting to support those local solutions. I think it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, they've exhibited the highest level of social responsibility. Um, and uh, we, we hope and pray that we can continue working together in growing both anesthesia services and uh, critical care services. Today marks three weeks again uh, in this program where we are functionalizing uh, critical care units in three regional referral hospitals. Uh, that is Fort Porto Regional Referral, uh, Ginger Regional Referral, and Lira Regional Referral Hospitals. These are hospitals that do not have anesthesiologists on ground. And I would like to say a big thank you to the association members who've taken their personal time and away from their families uh, to go and activate this. These were big investments by government uh, in terms of equipment, but the equipment was underutilized or not utilized at all because in some regional referrals, they actually had to uh, unwrap a lot of the equipment. So this makes a very big difference. One of the people we are proud of and associating with you to develop these services is the Association of the Anesthesiologists of Uganda. Members of who have been placed in this hospital in teams of three, of two to three, and we have been with them now, this is now the third week. And they are helping us set and improve the ICU services here. I like the fact that you've trained uh, more than 15 people. Uh, this is good. You've left uh, a team on the ground. But as you know, once in a while, after some time, these people will need refresher training. Uh, health is a key thing, and as Fort Potro City, the regional referral hospital being in the city, we are glad because we are going to be getting services nearer. You just walk, you come here, you get the services. Then as a total region, we are still uh, blessed that you've done this. Hmm? We thank you very much for identifying with us and giving us this support. This collaboration with you is within our values as a shrine in this hospital's strategic plan, vision and mission. And therefore, we wish to cherish that and work with you until we see that we have a vibrant ICU services for this region. The discipline of anesthesia per se is there to make sure that 
the patient is safe throughout surgery. We've expanded the scope of anesthesia to include critical care services, which have come to the forefront, especially in this time of the COVID pandemic. It has actually showed us that you really need a specialist in place, eh? especially for this critical care. I'm talking about the anesthesiologist. Eh? So we have realized that however much we may have the ICU beds in place, the ICU equipment in place, there is that time where, when you really need a technical personnel and come in and intervene. The COVID-19 pandemic has just helped to amplify the problems that we had in the health system and not just amplify them but unmask a lot of those that were hidden and we thought we could cover up. Um, what COVID did was to overwhelm the health system in, in all aspects in terms of the number of patients, the severity of patients and that just showed how deficient we were but mostly in the area of critical care. Um, it has long been an area that has been neglected in, with regards to healthcare in the country and COVID helped to bring that to the forefront because a lot of people required critical care services. They could not afford them from private healthcare facilities because the public healthcare facilities were not in position to offer these services adequately. I have committed at least 15 staff to be thoroughly trained by this team and take up the roles of ICU service delivery in this hospital. Well, uh, with this particular training, I must say it has been a good one. It has uh, added more on our knowledge. We had the, the equipment in place, uh, but how to use them, you would find it is a challenge. Eh? So I believe in this period, the team has been able to add more on the knowledge they had previously to use this ICU equipment. I found a team that is very receptive, a team that is willing to learn, um, that actually practices the information that they give them because from my interaction with them I realized they've been bringing up uh, some of the trainings they had from the previous weeks and also trying to, to practice what has been talk to them, which is a very good thing. Um, I think they just need some more support and I, I feel like they'll be there. And what we do when we get here is uh, we are involved in the day-to-day -day care for very, very sick patients. Uh, we are involved in, um, in the organization and the everyday running of the ICU unit. Uh, we are involved in advocacy, um, especially um, creating a link between the hospital administration but also other units of the hospital like the pharmacy, the radiology, the laboratory um, to try and understand what we do in the ICU so that they can support us better. Um, for Fort Porto for example we, we have cared for over seven patients in, this, uh, in the last three weeks um, and when we do that, we, 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 we are actively teaching and mentoring the nurses and the doctors that are at the facility. We've done a number of things. We initially started with uh, the self courses. The self courses were actually uh, the first self course, which was self obstetrics, was done here in this country, or I mean globally, was done in Barara which is in this country, and it has gone on to spread. Uh, after that came the safe pediatrics, and after that came uh, the safe operating room. So we've conducted quite a number of them. And again, one of the challenges that was faced by anesthesia at the time uh, was the lack of face. What do I mean by lack of face? Because the discipline of anesthesia was falling under the departments of surgery all over the country. And even in uh, some of the hospitals, it is still happening. But bringing it out as, uh, a, self st uh, as a standalone discipline has actually improved on the image, which has been shown by the increase in the uptake of the people who, are, uh, who have joined 
uh, the anesthesia program. The government has procured ICU equipment that has been delivered to all the regional referral hospitals, which is which has been you know a great help. Um, secondly, the government has also committed to training anesthesiologists and also other cadres, including ICU nurses and bachelors of anesthesia, um, anesthetic officer. Uh, yes cadres so they've committed to that as well the government is also committing to funding increased funding for the healthcare system and just educating the public as well the gap currently is for 400 anesthesiologists it is sort of laughable when someone in the uk says and have one anesthesiologist for 100,000 when you come to uganda you have one anesthesiologist for about 600 to 750,000 patients the ratios are horrendous. The association has come forward and created, together with support from Minister of Health in terms of scholarships, a, non, a cadre of a non-physician anesthesiologist, but better trained. This is a Bachelor of, nurse, uh, bachelor of Science in uh, Anesthesia program. And again, a number of, anesthesia, of AAU members are giving free time to train and to actually mentor these uh, students. We want to step it for much further by looking at uh, earning service training using a fellowship model. Uh, the AAU subscribes to the College of Anesthesia for Eastern Central and Southern Africa, the Canexa, and we are looking at activating this fellowship program here. It has advantages in that it allows us to have people who are providing a service, but it also allows them to move to different hospitals where the, we, uh, we explore and exploit the strengths of, the, of those different units. Someone wants trained in cardiac anesthesia, we should, for a period of time they will go to UHI. They want to train in regional, for a period they will go to Umbarara. Uh, if they want to do, if, for their period training in pediatrics, they will move to Naguru. And with this, we should be able to multiply and overcome the limitations that, uh, provide, uh, that exist because of the university model that is happening at this point in time. We, we, we are really looking at a number of, um, a number of programs going forward uh, to try and, uh, and build on what we have done uh, so far. We, we have a number of training programs, uh, both at, uh, at um, at a, <coughs> a bachelor's level, we have a program in Busitema which we hope will increase on the human resource. But as a, as a country, we're also trying to start a college training for anesthesiologists. Um, and, and the beauty in that is that these anesthesiologists will be training from the regional referrals, from the regional hospitals, as they also provide the service. Uh, but uh, in the short term, we, we are going to um, launch uh, an, an, a nationwide anesthesia call center that's toll free and can be accessed by our colleagues working all over the country um, at any, any time of the day at no cost. Uh, this is one of the platforms that we think will reduce or will try to close the gap between access to specialist services or specialist consultations and, um, and deliver of service to the, to, the, to the patient. My prayer would be that I walk into even the smallest hospital in this country and I find a well-qualified anesthesiologist. It's a very long journey, but we've taken the first steps. So we have, uh, we have a cohort of people who are willing to do this, but it, it also takes funding. Um, and as, as an association, we can't say that we can stand uh, uh, by ourselves and be able to deliver this, but um, we, 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 we welcome support both from local companies, local, um, local NGOs, local uh, corporate organizations to work with us to, to be able to deliver uh, some of these programs.